Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. Glad to have everyone here as uh, we continue the, uh, the season of Pentecost. Let us rise as we are able as we uh, prepare ourselves for the celebration of Holy Communion by joining in the confession and forgiveness. And throughout the service, uh, wherever there's a light print, I will read that part, and the congregation will join in on the dark print. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and depression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and grief. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but by the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Let us remain standing for our gathering hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's join in our song of praise.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading today is from Jemiah 11, verses 18 through 20. Today's reading tells of the suffering of the prophet Jeremiah, who announced God's words to Judah, but was met with intense opposition and persecution. Jeremiah continues to trust in God in the midst of his suffering. Here begins the reading. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. And I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. We'll read from Psalms 54 responsively. God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Here begins the reading. Save me, O God, by your name. Hear my prayer, O God. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life. Behold, God is my helper. Render evil to those who spy on me. I will offer you a free will sacrifice. And praise your name, O Lord, for good. For you have rescued me from every trouble. Our second reading today is from James chapters 3 and 4. The wisdom God gives unites our hearts and minds. Instead of living to satisfy our own wants and desires, We manifest this wisdom in peace, gentleness, mercy, and impartiality towards others. Here begins the reading. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with the gentleness of born wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. 
Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Let us rise as we are able for the gospel acclamation. Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and the disciples went on and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me, not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Here's my clicker is out of juice, so <laughs> I'll point to you, Dan, okay, when I need to change it. I think I'm going to replace the battery on this, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. My brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for calling us to be your disciples in spite of who we are. Lord, we ask that you forgive us when we, when we want to put ourselves first. But also, Lord, help us to remember that our worth, our value before you is not dependent upon what we achieve. We do not need to work or earn your favor. So, Lord, we pray that Help us to remember that in your death and resurrection, you've already accepted us. And as we live out, Lord, this life of discipleship, help us to remember that greatness is not about us. It's not about the way the world looks at it. Greatness is not about fame and fortune and awards or status. True greatness is about serving you and glorifying you. So, Lord, we pray that you'll help us to remember this always as we seek to continue to be your disciples. In your son's name we pray, amen. There's a story from the life of the champion boxer, Muhammad Ali, of course, who was known as probably one of the greatest boxers of all time. One of the things he was not especially known for was humility. One such story was as after he boarded a commercial airliner, the stewardess was asking everyone, you know, before they uh, took off to please fasten their seat belts. He refused. Several times she asked him, would you please fasten your seat belt, you know, for safety reasons. And his response to her was, Superman don't need no seat belt. 
But she had a quick response. Well, Superman didn't need an airplane either. Buckle up. <laughs> I tried to fact check it to, to see if this story was actually true. Nobody really knows, but it does kind of fit in that often we have to swallow our pride when we only think about ourselves. And at that moment, he was certainly put in his place. And I got to admit, I enjoy it when I, when I see someone who I think is really arrogant, really self-righteous, get humbled. I love it. <laughs> I love to see really powerful teams get beat. I love to see Ohio State get beat. I just can't stand <laughs> Ohio State. Being a lifetime badger, for instance. And I've always tended to be on the side of the underdog, the little guy. As many of you know, I've been a Cub fan my whole life. And they were always known as the lovable losers. They broke our hearts so many times. Right, Bob? My fellow Cub fan over there. That's what, 2016 was so unbelievable when they actually won the World Series. It took 108 years, but they got there. And when I grew up, but, but you know, there was something too loving, the lovable losers. And then in, growing up in the 70s, the Packers were always bad. The Badgers were really bad during that time. That was painful to watch, but you know, it was something to being a loyal fan, even though we weren't rooting for a winning team. And then when I went to Madison in the late 80s, I had a lot of fun marching in the band. We had a lot of fun. But in the four years that I was there, we won a total of seven games. <laughs> I remember one road, we took one road trip a year in the band, and my freshman year, we went to Michigan. You know, a huge stadium, over 100,000 people. That was something to come out of the tunnel in this huge stadium. And we had a great time there, but let's put it this way, the Badgers were behind 42-0 at halftime. <laughs> but, of course, we stayed loyal, and we just made fun of the other band when we could. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes it's fun to root for the underdog even when we don't win. But yet... Isn't it also true sometimes when our teams all of a sudden become winners, we can then get spoiled? And then we can be super critical. I admit it. Yeah, of course, the Badgers got good right after I graduated. And Alvarez came in. The program really turned around. They went to several Rose Bowls. But then if they had a, perhaps had an off game or an off season, I could be a little critical. Or, of course, the Packers now. I mean, we're used to them being in the playoffs and, and so on. And, and then we, we get spoiled, we can tend to be very hard on them when they mess up or when they don't look good. I mean, the way our culture is, everybody loves a winner. But yet when winners become losers, we can easily turn on them. That's our human nature. We may like the underdogs sometimes, but uh, ultimately we like winners. We like the ones who win championships and so on. Well, Jesus consistently challenges us to look at what does it really mean to be a winner and a loser. When Jesus talks about winners and losers, he is promoting an entirely different philosophy than the way the world works, because we all know it. The winner, winners in our culture are about those who have money and, same, money and status and fame and trophies and, and all that stuff. But yet Jesus preaches a different way. In our gospel lesson, we just heard, once again, Jesus tells them like it is. He tells them what's going to happen. They're going to go to Jerusalem. He's going to be turned over to his opponents, his enemies. He's going to, be, he's going to suffer and die and rise on the third day. Over and over, he tells them, this is what's going to happen, folks. But they just don't get it. It just goes right over their heads. That's why often, again, in the gospel of Mark, the disciples are referred to the disciples because they never get it. And so on the way to Capernaum, you know, he just told them he was going to suffer and die. That's, that's, but, of course, eventually rise again. But they kind of blow that off, and their discussion is all about who's the greatest. They totally ignore him, and they're arguing amongst themselves who is the greatest. I wonder, though, before I get too hard on them, if I were in their shoes... How would I respond? Would I blow Jesus off too? I mean, after all, don't we have a tendency to hear what we want to hear? We believe what we want to believe. 
It's so, sometimes we don't want to hear about sacrifice and humility and all that, what Jesus preaches. We'd rather be in charge, wouldn't we? However, Jesus invites us to consider true winning is about following him. While our culture looks down on losers, Jesus says ultimately it's the losers who are the winners. Following him is about not looking down on other people, but rather us trusting in him. And another thing, if you look at it from the flip side, if we feel like a loser, if we feel like we don't measure up to the world, we're not good enough, we do that all the time, don't we? We compare ourselves to other people. We compare ourselves. And often it looks like we don't measure up. But Jesus says none of that matters. Ultimately what matters is trusting in him, following him. What matters ultimately to Jesus is relationships, how we reach out to one another. But again, our stubborn human nature, the way it is, is we don't want, to, we don't want anyone else to tell us what to do. We, we think we know what's best, and we try to find ways that we can be better than others. And often, we hear a lot today about individual freedom, individual rights, and so on. But yet Jesus, the way he describes freedom, freedom is not about freedom to do whatever we want. True freedom actually is following him, putting aside our egos, putting aside our worldly sense of what's great and what's not, putting that aside and simply following him. And I found this quote. This was uh, William Barclay, who was a Scottish uh, a Presbyterian pastor when it comes to Christian freedom. He says, Christian freedom does not mean being free to do as we like, it means being free to do as we ought. The life of a Christian is not about being free to do what we like, but free to do what we ought. That's echoing what Jesus is ultimately getting at. True freedom is putting aside our egos, trying to, be, trying to outdo one another, trying to be greater than one another, putting all that aside and trusting in him. To illustrate this point, Jesus takes a little child. He holds a little child. And you've got to remember, in that culture, the children were absolutely at the lowest of the totem pole. They were below women, even. Because women and children were viewed as property at that time. But children were the most vulnerable, the most worthless in society. But Jesus says, whoever welcomes this little child welcomes me. Jesus says, true greatness is about how we live out his love by reaching out especially to the most vulnerable, those who are the losers. True winning is humility. True winning is reaching out in love in his name. True winning is not about, again, status and ratings and trophies, promotions and all that stuff. It's about relationships. Jesus tells his disciples plainly, following me is not easy. It never will be. But trust in me, he says. It's about relationship. Greatness is is trusting in him. God invites us to know him, to love him, and then love our neighbors as ourselves, especially the lowly, the vulnerable. That's why, you know, this, this past 18 months, we've all given up a lot. We have sacrificed a lot. We've done it all out of love, not of care for, especially our most vulnerable. And we're not certain about the future yet. This pandemic continues to ravage on. We don't know how long it's going to last. There's signs of hope, but yet we still live in a lot of uncertainty. But yet we still go forward one day at a time, trusting in Jesus, trusting, living out the freedom he's given us to continue to care for and love and serve one another. Martin Luther also talked about the freedom of the Christian ultimately is the freedom to serve. He says a Christian is a perfectly dutiful servant of all, subject of all, subject to all. The freedom of the Christian is to be subject 
to one another. It's when we love and serve that we truly experience true happiness. And ultimately, it's in service we experience true greatness. None of us measure up to God's standards, but God accepts us and embraces us and invites us to trust in him. And the good news is, even when we find it hard to trust him, and when we find it hard to have faith, God does not give up on us. He invites us to continue to come to him, turn to him, trust in him. He says, I love you as you are. You are great in my eyes, no matter what the world says or thinks. God is at work, and God is faithful. So if we really want to know what greatness is, all we have to do is look at the cross. Remember our Savior who died for us and who rose again so that we may know him and be in relationship with him now and in the life to come. True greatness is following Jesus. It doesn't matter what the world says or thinks. What matters is what he thinks. And we know what he thinks of us. He laid down his life. He loves us so that we can love one another. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So now let us rise as we are able for the hymn of the day. may be seated. Just wanted to uh, mention uh, a couple of announcements before we uh, continue. I'd like to thank everyone who helped us to have a very uh, festive uh, stewardship uh, fellowship last week. That went really well. And uh, also I'd like to thank everyone who supported our uh, Rock the Block effort, block effort this week. Uh, a, a few of us served and uh, and some came the night before to prepare meals that we served for volunteers of uh, Habitat for Humanity's uh, Rock the Block project. It was a great event, um, an opportunity to serve the community. So I'd like to thank everyone for that. And this week, Thursday, our quilters are going to be meeting once again at 10 o'clock. They are resuming. And then uh, before that, at 9 o'clock, um, anybody's welcome to join us for Bible study. I've had a request to uh, look at the book of James. The book of James has a lot of uh, very uh, good insights to help us uh, live the Christian life. Um, it's a very interesting book. Uh, Martin Luther didn't like it so much, but yet uh, we can look at it, and it because it gives us a lot of very good practical uh, words of advice. It talks a lot about uh, the tongue, 
how we use our tongues, how words do matter, and, and things like that. So, yeah, we're going to start uh, 9 o'clock uh, Thursday mornings with Bible study, the book of James, and then the, um, the quilters will meet at 10. And if someone cannot be there Thursday at 9 o'clock, I'm happy to share any material resources that I have. So just wanted to mention that as well. And if anybody has any uh, further announcements, so please feel to let me know, and I'd be happy to share them in worship. So now let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as it is printed. Now let us rise again as we're able. Let us join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So we now continue with the prayers of intercession. And again, I'd like to uh, encourage anyone, if you have a joy or a concern, please feel to let uh, Amy or myself know. Um, be happy to include them in the announcements. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, you alone are great. Help us to remember again and again, Lord, that true greatness is about humility. It's about service. It's about reaching out to one another. Help us to remember that our value is not dependent upon us and what we achieve. Our true value, our self-worth is dependent on you. You make us worthy. In your eyes, we are valuable. So, Lord, as we accept this, help us to share this with others. There are so many who are hurting. There are so many who, uh, who feel worthless. Help us to, to remind ourselves and everyone else that no one in you is worthless. Lord, we continue to pray for all those who are impacted by the pandemic. We especially pray for health care workers, those on the front lines, those who are feeling overwhelmed. We pray that you'll continue to bless them. And we thank you for the gift of the medical science, the gift of the vaccine, and all the treatments. And Lord, we, we pray that you'll continue to bless the efforts of the scientists and doctors. And we thank you for their wisdom. And Lord, we pray for so many who are battling anxiety, depression isolation during this time. Show us as a church how we continue to reach out to people in love. Show us the practical ways we can do that. And Lord, we lift up before you all those in our hearts and minds. We pray for healing and wholeness for all of them. We lift up Barb, Susie, we especially pray for Susie as she's going to be facing a heart surgery on Thursday. We lift up Leslie, Trista Joe, Bonnie, Amy, Tina, Cindy, Kathy, Helen, Jackie, Dawn, Gerald, Ginger, Anna, Sam, and all others that we name. Lord, we continue to lift up all public servants. We especially lift up Shane and Zachary and who are serving us in the military. We, we thank you for all those who are serving our country. And Lord, we continue to pray for all those who are being impacted by wildfires, droughts, those continue to recover from hurricanes. Lord, we pray that again, you will help us to find ways to reach out to the hurting. 
And we thank you for the many ways that you are using us already. But help us as a church, as a congregation, to keep our, to keep our thoughts, our minds on you, allowing you to guide us. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us present the offering. And we continue with the offertory prayer. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue now with the great thanksgiving and our communion celebration. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty and our joy to give thanks to you and live our lives in service of you. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son that, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. And so with the choir of angels and with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Let's take our cups out of the bags. And again, I'll talk you through step by step. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And now let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for the banquet is ready, and all are welcome. Let me now remove the covering for the wafer. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Let's now join in singing the Lamb of God. life in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. May the Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. And I want to thank all of you for uh, joining us in, uh, in worship this morning, and we hope that this service has been a blessing to you. So we now conclude with our sending hymn, Lift High the Cross. <laughs> 